Welcome. The topic of the day is aspects about product and production, part one. As we will see, this is the first of four classes about specific aspects of product definition and production processes. Just to recall you, this is part of the general topic where we call technical analysis. Let's see what, what is expecting us and this is our outline. We'll start with some general uh, considerations. We will study the production process and as a third item today, we will study the plant design. Let's start with the general considerations. Product analysis is definition of performance specifications, materials and components selection, methods of manufacture and testing criteria. So, so far we've seen that we have a marketing and sale program, then we have a production program, and this is the moment for analyzing what the product specifications are and how they impact on the production process itself. In details, standards for materials and processes, technical inputs for make or buy decisions. This is a very important element because when, as we will see, when it comes to make or buy, it's very important to assess and consider the existent internal capabilities of the company. Most effective way to produce, and here we can distinguish between pure effectiveness, for example, the quality of the product, and efficiency of the machinery and the plant itself. Information for supplies uh, program. So, as we will see, when it comes to supplies, we will consider material and other components specifications. So, this is the range of items which are included in the product analysis. Product analysis might be seen as a sequence as well. So, as a sequence, we will deal with specific steps. The first one is to analyze the product design. Second, disaggregate product. And third, define properties of products by products and waste using related industrial standards. So, so far it's, it's quite visible that we are dealing not only with the products, but only with the byproducts and the waste, so all these three items should be to consider, taken in consideration and uh, for all of these items we can consider specific standards. Just to focus a little bit on the idea of standards. Standards might be defined as the rules of technology and engineering. So if we refer to standards that implies that we are referring to a set of established rules these rules might refer to the branch or the company standards. So within the same company, if we have different branches, each brand, each facility might have its own standards. Second, the national standards in terms of safety of products and productions, for example, if we compare two or more different countries, we might find different national standards. Third, international standards. When it comes to international standards, we should take in consideration also the fact that from country to country, from area to area, standards might differ in terms of units as well. So we might have different measures and units for weight, volume, distance, and so on. Considering the standards, we might analyze what are the advantages and the disadvantages of referring to standards as well. 
In terms of advantages of standardization, uh, first of all, we have that standards might, a standard might assure compatibility with the world market. So if we refer to international standards and we are compliant with these standards, our product might be com compatible with the, with the rest of the world. Second, assures and defines quality. The standard itself is not just a way for assuring quality, but it's also for defining the quality of a, an average product in a specific industry. Third, it's a source for ready-made solutions to technical problems. So, a standard it is a rule on one hand in its nature, but in terms of significance, it could be considered as a ready-made solution for known problems. So, uh, being the source of ready-made solutions to technical problems, avoid the typical issue of reinventing the wheel within the same company if we consider different branches. Standards might have some disadvantages as well. To some extent, they might obstruct the advancement of recent technical solutions. So the issue turns around the fact that technology could move uh, a long time and the standards could be stuck to specific positions, meaning that technology is advancing is advancing and the standards could not be modified in the, in the short run. So, as a paradox, new solutions could be uh, constrained by old standards. In an operational terms, we might consider the role of these standards. So, we have subfields of applications. When it comes to the analysis of product design, we should consider different alternatives, both in terms of standards and in terms of technology. And we should review the technological feasibility of the solution we're going to propose. Another important element is to disaggregate the product, which means to define the required subassemblies, the industrial semi-products, and the raw materials, as well as to decide in order to buy or to make, in order to create something within the company or to buy something from the market. The third aspect is define properties of products, byproducts, and ways using related industrial standards. So, the definition of standards or the uh, adoption of standards is not just related to the product itself, but includes all the production process and byproducts and wastes. Product analysis passes through uh, product design and performance specifications too. So in terms of design, we should specify the materials, product configuration, shape, size, volumes, drive the choice of, of materials to begin with. Then we have to design the operating environment and the different product configurations. So, this, these elements considered together are the main pillars of the design of the products. Additionally, we might consider the assembly procedures the service requirements, and the input requirements. So on one hand, we define the structure of the product and the related needs, and on the other hand, we define the procedures, the services, and the inputs requirements. When it comes to performance, it should be specified in terms of output, quantity, and quality. So, basically, it's about how the product is used and what it does for, for the consumers and uh, what, 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 is, what is the bunch of activities that the company should put into place in order to realize 
such a, such a product. So, this is for the product analysis. The next step and the second part of our class is about the study of production process. So, programming the production activity is not just about the definition of the characteristics of the product, but it's also about the definition of the process structure. So, production process and methods uh, might be considered as a sequence of operations, type and number of machines required, material handling methods and equipment, so again, quantity, types, and so on, as well as the material energy flows. So, when it comes to the sequence of operations, for continuous and semi-continuous uh, processes, it's possible to refer to diagrams. So, for example, if you consider this kind of production, which is pictured in this, in this slide, we have a diluent and a catalyst, which is taken from some compounds. And we go through a mixer, we have another catalyst here, and then we add some other inputs. Again, ethylene, commonomers. We combine all these inputs into a reactor, then we have another phase which is a receiver, and then we have a decanter and so on. So for continuous and semi-continuous process, it's possible to refer to this kind of diagram in order to picture how the process is structured. The sequence is pretty clear, as well as the different phases. When it comes to uh, the elements of production process, we could refer to a different representation of the process itself. So, we could adopt this standard. We have the element of production process, and here we have different elements. And we could combine these elements into a process flowchart which is a graphic illustration of the operation sequence. Now, as a standard, as we will recall later as well, we have a circle for operation, an arrow for transportation, a triangle for storage, this kind of shape for delay, and this square for inspection. So, if we consider the basic structure of any production process, we might refer to these kind of operations and uh, the combination of such phases constitutes the production flow itself. Another important element of the study of the production process is about the process sensitivity analysis, which implies to consider the reactivity of the project itself to some variables that we should take in consideration. So considering the different values that those variables could, could assume, we have different impact on the project itself. So the range of impacts of, meaning that it's referred to, the continuous part load operation, the variation in quality of inputs, power interruption, which is uh, crucial both for batch operations as well as continuous processes, climate abnormalities, so if we consider that some facilities are based on refrigerators, changing in the external environmental um, climate could impact on the, on, the, on the life of the plant, on the oper operations of the plant itself. So if we consider that a facility could last for 25 years or something, we should observe and predict the, the, the changes in the external climate as well. Performance drop, 
linked to the aging of equipment or the obsolescence of the, of the equipment and so on. So when it comes to the uh, study of the production process, we should consider all these, these elements. The third part of our class is about study of the plant design. So just to recap, we started from the product, we considered the process, and we finish with the plant design. So uh, when it comes to the plant design, it's, uh, it's about the estimates of land type and size of buildings we should consider for, for establishing our, our facility. Plan design. During the preliminary stages, before the, the investment is committed, it is necessary to have some ideas about the plan design in order to firm up the cost estimates for the project. So, as we've seen, we have the preliminary phases and then we have the feasibility analysis phases. During the preliminary phases, although the plant is just an idea, it's just a project, it's very important to define its characteristics in order to estimate costs. So, the preliminary facilities layout has to do with allocation for main equipment and buildings and the loading docks. So basically, we're dealing with three phases of operations, which are the production, the shipping, and the receiving of materials. So the layout of the buildings is influenced by these three main operations. So considering the layout of the, of the plant, we could organize and uh, speed up or be constrained by uh, structural elements when it comes to the combination of uh, raw materials into, into a formula for obtaining the product. So loading docks, for example, are crucial for receiving raw materials and for shipping um, uh, final products. Second, plan for roads, rail lines, conveyors, and utility lines. So it's not just the plant itself, it's the set, the suite of elements that we need in order to plug our plant to the utilities. So again, roads, rail lines, conveyors, utility lines are just the main elements of the infrastructure surrounding the company. The third element is about storage areas for raw materials, semi-products and products. So, since uh, production is not uh, always continuous, but even though the production is continuous, the flow of raw materials and the outflow of finished products is not continuous. And either we need storage areas, both for raw materials, for semi-products, and for finished products. Further, we need space for office and service building areas. So it's not just about manufacturing, it's about the support activities of the value chain as well. So, uh, procurement, legal office, human resources, finance, candidacy, and so on, need their own space for conducting their activities as well. Areas provided for future expansion. This is very important since once the capacity is installed, as we will see, uh, the capacity is planned according to the estimates of demand and production. But it could be wise to consider some 
eventual expansion of the plant capacity as well. So, it's important that the plants are not just constrained and narrowed in a specific area, since if the company is growing and the project is being successful and we need more space, that will be possible to add some additional capacity to the installed uh, plan. Otherwise, the company or the project is forced to move somewhere else in order to find a bigger location. Then we need security facilities, which is um, about surveillance of the, of, of the area, which is about the protection, both physical and electronic protection of the areas. So this is for the plant installations. These are all the elements that we should take in consideration. What is very important to um, investigate is the flow of materials relationships, which is the flow of personnel and materials in the plant since it will affect the design. So it's not just the scale or the volumes of activities that should be carried out, it's also the combination of personnel and other materials within the plant structure. So a classification of these kind of activities and in terms of the relations between these, the different elements could be classified as A, absolutely, E, especially, I, important, O, ordinary, U, unimportant, X, undesirable. So, within this classification of relationships between the different areas of the plan and within the different resources of the plan, we might have a scheme like this, picture in this table. So we have the flows of possible combinations from two. So we have two elements, the sender somehow and the receiver to some extent. So we have different activities, receiving, row stores, turning, milling, cleaning. So we use the same codes that we are familiar with uh, already, operations, transportations, inspections, and so on. And we might be able to de depict some, some typical situation, let's say, from receiving to row stores. So we have transportation here, storage here. This is the quantity, 1,500. And the code is especially. When it comes to fr from receiving to turning, from, for example, this is another action. Then we have quantity 100 and the priority is lower, it's just ordinary. When it comes to another example, from milling to cleaning, the combination of two operations, we might have 2,500 and the highest priority, absolutely necessary, the interaction between these two areas. So, the flow of materials relationships help the project depict the interactions among different, different areas, among different resources committed to the same project. Another element is the plant layout. So, for each department, we should determine the amount of space which is required for different elements. Before starting with the analysis of the elements, we should recall the fact that since we have to combine different resources into production and since we are familiar with the idea of flows crossing the plant and involving the old, the, the old layout, uh, the layout of plant is crucial since according to the shape, the physical shape, the physical layout that we give to the plant, we are able to be more or less efficient 
in terms of resources, we, we, we might be able to be less or more effective in terms of the usage of the resources themselves. So, the space is required for each piece of machinery and equipment, areas for workers, both for working and non-working activities, so we should consider the working lines as well as the rest areas and so on. Maintenance service, so since equipment and machinery needs some maintenance services, we should reserve some rooms for the maintenance services and for the, the, the spare parts storage as well. Material set down, so the storage of materials that we have seen already, both for inputs and for outputs. Access to ASL, this is very important, both for operational and uh, safety and security reasons as well. So it's not just the layout and the design of the operational areas, it's also the shape of the areas connecting different different areas. So ASL and the general support areas. This is the uh, the buffer between the pure operational activities and the rest of the plan and the rest of the of the company activities. The last one is about ancillary facilities. So everything which is complementary to the operational part uh, in a, in, a, in a narrow sense. What is important to depict is also the flow of personnel and materials in the plan and it will affect the design. So, how all these resources flow from one area to the other is crucial for the, the design itself. It's crucial for the physical layout of, of the spaces. So, when it comes to buildings, then we have a whole comprehensive list of elements that we should take in a, in, a, in a serious consideration. So, buildings, space requirements. And if we adopt as an input everything that we said so far, it's pretty clear that we have to define different areas and consistently we should reserve different areas to different activities and at the end we need the space requirements for the whole building. Second, construction specifications. When it comes to construction specifications it's both about the quality of the components for realizing the, the, the building and the physical characteristics and standards that we are referring to. So it's a very critical choice since um, it could impact in a very significant way on the cost of the investment and that it is also related to the sustainability of the investment itself over time. Then we have the construction scheduling once we have defined the space and we have defined the specifications, then we have to schedule the activities. And eventually we have an estimation of the cost of the construction. So all these elements are cost sensitive, which means that considering the choices that we make in this preliminary uh, phases, then we should have an idea, a rough idea of what the cost will be. Sometimes the, the ultimate idea of the, the cost of the buildings is obtainable only at the end of the project, but it's very important to have an, an, an accurate estimation of the cost on the preliminary phase as well. So what are the basis for cost estimation? So since the cost is a central element in the analysis, we should refer to specific basis. So basis for cost estimation. Facilities layout is basis for estimating cost of land and site preparation. 
So, just recall some ideas from the previous classes. No matter if the investment is a greenfield or a brownfield one, we need land and site preparation. Of course, if the investment adopts a brownfield approach um, in the area where we're installing the capacity, probably some service, uh, some infrastructures are already present. If it's instead a greenfield operation, then we have to prepare the site in a proper way. Meaning that the company should consider the installation of infrastructures like utilities or the connection to, 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 to some utilities and things like that. Second, civil engineering works, which is the physical building of the of the plant. So, civil engineering is related to buildings, utility installations, so the connection to the utility infrastructures, roads, and railroad sidings. So, these two elements are crucial, for, mostly for um, capital intensive productions, which means that when it comes to physical transformations of several raw materials and several, several components into finished products, the highway systems or the, the, the road system is, um, is crucial for shipping activities to our plants and so receiving and shipping out our our finished products. Similarly, if the area is well served by um, railways and train transport train based transportations, it's important to establish some sidings in order to stock raw materials, incoming raw materials and outgoing uh, finished products. Then we need loading and unloading facilities. This is a very important element. So it's not just about space, but it's also about the, fa the, the necessary facilities for the usage of this, of this space. And then we have the operating costs for in-plant transport and communication. Let me spend some time on this, uh, on this element. To begin with, we should be familiar with the idea of operating costs. So when it comes to operating costs, it's everything which is considered within the company and it's closely related to the operations within the company itself. So in-plant transport and communications, it's about the coordination of different resources and different elements within the same the same company. Now, the difficult part about this object is that sometimes these costs are not explicit costs but are hidden costs, which means that it's very difficult to de detect them within the uh, profit and loss structure of the company itself. So, when it comes to implant transport, we have some specific costs related to the internal rails, for example, the internal transportation of the elements. When it comes to communications and in general terms of coordination, is the utilization of personnel in a proper way. So difficulties in communications and internal transportations are pretty much invisible in the economic structure of the company since they are hidden behind some um, natures of costs like personnel, machineries and so on, which are not closely or immediately related to the outcome which is expected by these resources. So the inefficiency could be very difficult to detect. Now, if we consider the early stages of the plan development or if we consider the preliminary phases of the investment analysis, 
the plant itself is not, is not existing yet. So in order to estimate this cost, we should refer to some standard cost factors. Uh, such standard cost factors can be detected both by referring to some benchmarking activities as well as by referring to some uh, estimations related to similar plants of the same company somewhere, located somewhere else. So in the early stage of the investment, it could be difficult to have an idea of this cost if we do not consider some standards factors or the general, the general uh, estimation of such items. Differently, in, uh, in a later stage of the investment, let's consider the feasibility uh, phase, the structure is already established, so the plant is already built and the facilities are already installed, which means that the accuracy of such costs could be higher for the estimation. So, if we consider that the plant design is not only about technical uh, characteristics, but it's also about economic feasibility of the building and of the construction of the plant itself, we should consider these two elements as uh, mutually impacting one with the other. So on one hand we have structural decisions to be taken as we've seen, materials to be used in the construction, alternatives, characteristics, specifications, connections to the infrastructures and so on. On the other hand we have the costs that should be related to these elements and these costs could be associated both to visible items like as the specifications of the um, of the elements that we just described as well as to some hidden uh, costs which are granted by or caused by the utilization of resources so the improper utilization of resources as well as the underestimation of some factors could um, generates additional costs which are very difficult to predict in the early stage and can be observed only through specific analysis in the later stages. So today we have dealt with this first part about the uh, product and production definition within the technical analysis. As you will see during the next three classes, we will deepen more and more the idea of building the plant and defining the, um, the productive uh, capacity of the, of the company. That's everything for today. You can find additional information as usual on our website. Thank you.